I want shared custody of my coworker's hamster. I work closely with my colleague. In my job, we essentially work in teams of two. My colleague also happens to be my next door neighbor. Both myself and my colleague work the same shifts, so we arrive at work and leave work at the same time. Recently, I've been wondering if I'm treating my colleague fairly. My colleague does not drive, and work is located a 30 minute drive away. I do drive, and I'm very passionate about my car. It's fair to say my car is my pride and joy, and I spend a lot of time and money keeping it pristine. My colleague either leaves her work very early and walks, or takes the bus to and from work. Obviously, being neighbors, it's very obvious that she spends a large portion of her time traveling to and from work. Now, on to my dilemma. I could, of course, offer to let my colleague ride with me, and whilst I would not want or accept any payment, I know she would offer. That's not the issue. My issue is that a few times I've noticed the odd hair on her clothing. Now, I know this is not her personal hair due to the length and color, and I'm confident that this hair is actually from her pet hamster. I myself only own a pet rock, so naturally this is not an issue for me. I do not want to have to spend time examining the interior of my car for pet hair, as her hamster's hair is incredibly short and would be hard to find. Obviously, this would not be her fault, so as of now, I have not offered to give her a lift. Am I the jerk? I would appreciate any perspectives and suggestions. If this original poster's colleague was covered head to toe in cat hair, it would be one thing. But hamsters really aren't shedding their hearts out. It sounds like OP spotted one hair on maybe one or two occasions. He doesn't owe his colleague a ride, but his reasons for not offering one are pretty ridiculous. One commenter suggested he get a lint roller for his car. Naturally, OP misunderstood and assumed he was being told to just aggressively use his lint roller on this woman without warning. He thankfully has reservations about this. But it might not matter anyway, because OP posted an update a few months later, and it sounds like his tune has changed drastically. My place of employment had a long scheduled close down for two weeks before reopening. My neighbor, who also works with me, had scheduled to go away on holiday. I offered to pet sit her hamster for the full two weeks at my home. I'll admit that in the past I've been a little concerned about pet hair, but I've been working hard to loosen up. Anyway, she took me up on my offer, and I did plenty of online research as well as speaking to the local pet shop manager and local vet for advice. Initially, the hamster, Harry, seemed to settle in quite well. However, I noticed he was not particularly active in his small cage. During the first week, I introduced Harry to a routine to ensure he had maximum enjoyment. Hamsters do not live particularly long, so I wanted to maximize the time he has. The routine consisted of waking up and having breakfast of fresh produce from the garden, followed by a little exercise in his ball. A little rest for Harry, followed by an afternoon movie and lunch. Each day, I would get him a new chew toy, and then in the evening, I would sit out in the garden with him. Many other things, but you get the idea. My elderly father is a dollhouse furniture maker, and he was thrilled to make a new home for Harry, as well as some new accessories. It took around a week, but from Harry's reaction, I would say it was well worth it. The issue is that Harry has become very used to the new routine, and I took him for a vet visit to be sure he was coping well. The vet stated he seemed great and very healthy for his age. I was very proud. Would I be the jerk for asking my neighbor for shared custody? I don't see the issue, as it's in Harry's best interest, and surely stopping the routine so suddenly would be a shock and disappointment to Harry. We could go 50-50, or she could have him on weekends. She might say no, but is it so wrong to ask? I know I could get a hamster myself and give him or her a divine life. But really, Harry is my priority. I hate to say it, OP, but your efforts to loosen up have not been working out for you. If this is what you call loose, I'd hate to see what you think uptight looks like. Keep loosening up like this, and your proctologist might lose a finger one of these days. This woman asked you to watch a hamster for a couple of weeks. You not only gave him a whole new routine without running it by Harry's real owner, you pretty much changed your own routine to revolve around a pet that wasn't yours. And the dollhouse furniture is way over the top. For anyone wondering, the movie they watched together was Bolt. Great movie, but I can't imagine this hamster was deeply invested in it. Have you met a hamster? They aren't very expressive creatures. This routine was very clearly more for OP than for Harry. And his pet rock was presumably neglected throughout all of this, which is just awful. Does he even know if his rock is good with other pets? Does he even care? If he isn't asking these hard questions, then he obviously shouldn't have pets at all. My husband won't accept that his potatoes are disgusting. My husband is a chef. 
started as a line cook some years back and slowly worked his way up. So now he's working in a three-star restaurant as a chef. I'm not saying my husband is a bad cook, because he obviously isn't. A lot of his dishes are delicious. But one thing that is absolutely terrible is his potatoes. And let me be clear and tell you I'm being 100% truthful when I tell you that potatoes and spaghetti are all this man wants to eat. Now, despite him being a chef, he only cooks dinner maybe once every couple of weeks. This doesn't take away from the fact that he still requests potatoes for every single meal. I don't accommodate this, but was still doubling down and making them at least twice a week. However, lately I have outright refused to make them because he'll come behind me and doctor them up to his liking, making them absolutely garbage. He puts ranch, some foot-smelling cheese that stinks them up to the point of gagging, way too much garlic, and spices that don't even make sense. Nothing salt-related at all. They are gross. I wouldn't feed them to an enemy. I've expressed to him numerous times that we do not like his potatoes. I've told him to doctor up his own food versus the entire pan, and he just overlooks it and then gets angry that we refuse to eat his garbage. Have you ever eaten something so disgusting that the next day you were burping constantly and that food was still the only thing you could taste? That's what happens whenever you eat these potatoes. And like I said, he isn't even a bad cook. It's just his potatoes. So again, I've told him multiple times we do not like this food, period. So, a later night, I work late, and I come home, and once again, he has made these nasty potatoes. The kids are sitting at the table with all of their food gone, except the potatoes, and he's whining, telling them to eat their potatoes. So I tell him I need to speak to him outside, and I told him straight out that his potatoes are effing disgusting, words I've never used, and that he needs to stop trying to force it down our throats because it's coming to a point where I'm freaking livid. And to be this mad over potatoes is truly so ridiculous on my end. I mean, come on. He says I'm a jerk for making him feel like a bad cook, when this is his profession. Hmm, ranch, garlic, and cheese actually sounds like a great potato recipe. But if the entire family hates it, then it's weird he keeps insisting on making it. I don't see how OP could be a jerk here. She shouldn't have maybe said things as forcefully as she did, but she only did that after her husband ignored his family's pleas for weeks. At that point, he's practically wasting food by constantly making something he knows nobody but him will eat. He might be a good cook, but he's not a great chef if he thinks the opinions of the people he's cooking for don't matter. Maybe I'm missing something, but it sounds like the husband is completely in the wrong. Different people like different things. He doesn't need to take it personally if they don't want to eat potatoes the way he enjoys them. It doesn't say anything about him as a cook, but trying to force his kids to eat something they don't like does say something about him as a father. That's the only issue here that really matters, and it's the one that needs correcting. If you made it this far in the video, consider liking and subscribing for more videos coming. My husband keeps spending our money on the woman across the hall. We just had a woman in her mid-twenties and her nine-year-old daughter move into the apartment across the hall from us. The day the woman and her daughter moved in, she got on Buy Nothing, Nextdoor, Facebook Marketplace, and really any other neighborhood giveaway group asking for furniture, baby supplies because she's pregnant, and clothes and toys for her daughter. Her daughter went to the same summer camp as my kids, and after she started there, they conveniently had a food drive for their disadvantaged campers. My kids have been going there since they were three. They're now nine and 11, and they've never had a food drive. Then when school started, she got on the parent groups and asked if anyone would be able to drive her daughter home from school and watch her for an hour until she gets home. No pay was mentioned. My husband pressured me to say yes because she's friends with our girls, and she's in the same class as our younger daughter, so they can do homework together. That hour turned into two, and she started having dinner with us almost every night. Then the girl told my husband she doesn't think her mom is eating when she has dinner with us. That day we had a lasagna big enough to feed all of us twice, and he sent the leftovers home with her. Then he started to send all of our leftovers home with her, along with clothes our daughters grew out of and toys they didn't want anymore and he started to buy extra groceries for them. He didn't get anything expensive, just things like milk, eggs, store brand cereal, fruits and vegetables, and sometimes meat. It started adding up to an extra 40 or $50 a week just for them. He also started helping them around the house. I eventually told him to stop sending the leftovers home because I take them for lunch, and sometimes the kids also take them, so not having the leftovers is costing us extra money. Plus, the $40 or $50 a week should be spent on our family, not the woman across the hall. 
He said we can afford it, and they need it much more than we do. And I said we already do more than enough for them by acting as a free daycare for her and giving her daughter dinner five days a week. He called me selfish, jealous, and cruel, and now I want to know if I'm the jerk. Well, we all know it's impossible for a man to do a favor out of the goodness of his heart, so the commenters naturally jumped right to the assumption that Opie's husband is banging the neighbor. Some even took it further and decided that the neighbor's baby is probably his, and that he's going to leave OP as soon as it's born. I used to think Reddit learned about human beings by watching soap operas, but even a soap character wouldn't move his mistress in across the hall. I think the more rational explanation is that Reddit learns how people work by reading too much Reddit. I don't think OP is the jerk for not wanting to spend so much on a neighbor, but the way OP complains about things like the camp having a food drive shows that this is based a lot more on resentment than on practical money concerns. Also, while it's fine to not want to feed an extra mouth every night, allowing your children's friend to come over is not the same as running a daycare. If your daughters get along with this girl and do homework together, then she isn't hurting anyone by coming over. Not wanting to send leftovers home or buy extra groceries is one thing, since there are programs that will ensure the neighbors get food if she needs it. But some of the other complaints about the girl and her mother can probably be toned down for the sake of basic compassion. What do you think? Is Opie the jerk in this story? Does she have any reasonable concerns? Leave a comment and let us know what you'd do in her situation. Entitled stepnieces think my sister's heirlooms should go to them instead of her own children. My sister, Anna, passed away eight years ago. She had two boys, Luca and Milo, with her husband. The boys were her whole world, and when she realized she wasn't going to make it, she took me aside and told me she wanted me to look after her possessions, which included her small jewelry collection, a couple of very fancy art supplies, like custom paintbrushes, some stuffed animals she'd had since childhood, and some family photos, baby books, and blankets that belonged to our family. She told me she knew her husband would move on, and she worried he would allow any future children of his to have her stuff, instead of her boys, once they became of age. She made me promise I would keep them for the boys once they moved out. I made her the promise, and I kept it. He knew about it and was extremely unhappy with Anna's decision. He felt betrayed, and like they should be just as much his as hers. But legally, he couldn't do anything. My former brother-in-law remarried six years ago and has two stepdaughters, as well as a bio-daughter. Luca and Milo come to my house one weekend a month, which was ordered by the courts. And while they're with me, they've admitted to feeling like their dad wants them to treat the three girls like their mom's kids. He had asked them to ask me to give the girls the jewelry and stuffed animals. The boys also told me he had shown the girls the photos of the two of them with the stuffed animals, and the girls got really jealous. Luca and Milo said they don't want their mom's stuff to go to the girls. I promised them it would not, and that I would give it to them one day. My former brother-in-law's oldest stepdaughter is turning 13 soon and apparently she wanted my sister's locket or a look-alike. He approached me about it, and I told him no way. He told me I was being selfish, and that they are Milo and Luca's sisters, and Anna's memory should be shared with them, and they should feel like they have a guardian angel looking out for them. I told him Anna had not wanted that, and her priority would always have been her children over children he had or took on with someone else. I told him those three girls were nothing to do with Anna, and were not entitled to any of her possessions. He called me a jerk and told me I was making the girls feel bad, and that even if Anna never met them, I should have accepted them as family and done my best to treat them like so. He also brought up my not even letting them see the things in person, the stuffed animals especially, and I do remember his younger stepdaughter, who is 10, was upset to not get to see them. It makes me wonder if I'm being too harsh with the kids, but I also don't want them to get attached either, because they will never actually get anything from me. And the boys don't consider them sisters so it's unlikely they will ever give them anything either. Am I the jerk? This kind of story has been really popular lately. The commenters always naturally say the OP's not the jerk, and in terms of not giving the heirlooms away, that's true. However, there's another issue here. It's hard to pin down in this case because of the way it's worded, but it seems questionable that the dad really wants Luca and Milo to treat the girls like they had the same mother. It sounds like he just wants them to treat the girls like sisters, which is what they are, whether the boys like it or not. Reddit has this extreme hatred for stepfamilies. Technically, they're right when they say that you don't have to treat anyone a certain way if you don't feel like it, but not treating someone you live with like a total stranger really isn't that hard. It might be different in this case, since there's a lost mother at the heart of it, 
But that just makes me wonder how the new wife feels about all of this. It's very hard for a stepmother to feel accepted sometimes. She must have some kind of feelings about her own daughters going after the former wife's belongings. Is that not weird for her at all? It's a very bizarre situation, and it feels like some extra information would be helpful. But based on what we have, do you think OP is the jerk? Why or why not? Feel free to share your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.